Hello and welcome to uh, Development Environment Setup using Magento Cloud Docker. My name is Joe Shelton and I'm a technical lead at Magento Commerce where we have several cloud projects and I'm also a trainer at Magento U uh, for their cloud class. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with me, I'm, I'm active on the Magento Community Engineering Slack, so you can find me there. The purpose of today's video will be to set up a local development environment using Magento's new Docker configuration included in ECE Tools version 2002.0.20. Specifically, we're going to simulate uh, entering a project that's already in progress. Magento's documentation does a great job of uh, demonstrating how to set up a local environment and then get a, a vanilla install of Magento 2 running. And this is appropriate for demonstration purposes, but, but the process for entering a project that's already in progress is a little bit different. So we're going to review uh, what steps you take if you are a developer that's rece received your first ticket on a project, uh, first task to complete, and the project has already been under development for maybe a couple months, maybe the project is already live, it has a customized code base and a fully uh, populated database that needs to be recreated in a local environment. We'll also examine what steps are appropriate for day one when you're initially setting up your local development environment, and then the steps that are appropriate for subsequent days, just maintaining that Docker environment. We'll start with the steps for uh, day one during your initial setup of the Docker environment. We'll download three essential assets required to get a project running in any environment. Then we will uh, do some preparation for the Docker configuration files. We'll do a little bit of customization of the Docker configuration that Magento provides. We'll start up that Docker environment, and then we will uh, populate an env.php file with the appropriate values to connect to that environment. And then we will view the website running locally in our browser. In order to simulate a project that's already in progress, I've installed the sample data in a cloud environment. So this sample data populates a vanilla Magento install with a, a few content pages and several products. So we'll know we've succeeded when we can see these products in the local environment. So let's get started with the three essential project assets that you'll need to get a project running locally in any environment. Those are the, the project files uh, or the repository, the files in the repository, the database, and the media for the project, including product images and such. Media is optional, but I find it makes for a more pleasant development experience if you uh, can see the great products that your merchant is selling. So I take the extra time to download those. Um, you'll also notice that I'm going to be utilizing the Magento Cloud CLI. Uh, all three of these things could be done with SSH commands that you're probably all fam already familiar with. But um, if you haven't taken the time to look into the Magento Cloud CLI, spend some time with that. It does provide a lot of convenience to your Magento Cloud projects. I'll begin by opening up a terminal window and issuing a plain MGC command. Um, this gives you a list of all the projects you have available to you, and we're looking for the ID of the project you want to work with. Then we'll issue the MGC get command along with the project ID, and this will simply clone the repository to your local system. Uh, then we'll change to the project's directory. We're not going to issue the Magento Cloud build command. That's not appropriate for setting up a local environment. Um, then we'll give the MGC DB dump command, which takes a, a database from a cloud environment and, and gives you a dump locally on your local system. 
Now we're going to retrieve the media. Um, the, the pub media directory is not included in a repository by default, so we'll create that first. Then we will issue the MGC uh, mount download command, which will download all the media files. Next, we'll take some steps to prepare uh, Docker configuration files and take our first look at one of the great tools that Magento uh, built to aid us with Docker configuration. Opening up the project as it stands in our favorite code editor, we can see we have all the files committed to the repository, but we'll need to pull down uh, all the project dependencies, including Magento 2 and ECE tools. So we'll go to our command prompt and issue a composer install command. Now that we have the project's requirements, including ECE tools, we'll issue the ECE tools docker build command with a mode of developer. This generates a docker compose.yaml file, which you see here on the left. Those familiar with Docker uh, know that this is the essential file responsible for defining which containers will be a part of the Docker environment. This file was generated dynamically using the services.yaml file included in your project. Uh, the services.yaml file ordinarily defines what services will be available in the cloud environment and the docker build tool ensures that those same services are available in your local environment. So what's generated as far as a docker compose.yaml file could be different from project to project depending on what you have already defined in your services.yaml file. If I were to additionally define a RabbitMQ service in the services.yaml file, that same service would be available both in the cloud environment and here in my local environment. And we'll finish up with a couple quick and easy steps. First we'll take a distributable file that Magento includes and create a file that we can customize using that as a template. And then we'll take the database dump that we created earlier and move it to the dot, dot docker mysql docker entry point in it db.d directory. This is where you can put database dumps that you would like to populate a database container that's initially created. This is default docker functionality. This is nothing that Magento has customized. For step three, we'll apply some customizations to the standard Docker configuration provided by Magento. The configuration works well by default if only one project is making use of it, but if you need to work on multiple cloud projects at once, some changes need to be made. Uh, so we're going to apply some project-specific namespacing to various components in the environment, including the database, uh, the base URL, and the volume into which you sync project files. Also, we'll exclude database dumps from being synced at all. We'll start by taking a look at both the docker-compose.yaml file and the config.php file. We generated both of these files in the last step. Starting with the database, we'll change the username, password, and DB name to something more project-specific in my case, a uh, sample from the Magento default of Magento 2. Um, doing that in both files once again. Next, we'll change the, the URL that the website will be available in locally in the browser. This needs to be changed uh, both in the varnish container of the Docker configuration and the routes section of the config.php file. And finally, we're going to rename the volume that the project's files sync into. We'll continue editing the docker compose.yaml file and take our and take our first look at the docker sync.yaml file. So on the on the left, we're going to change the magento dash sync name of the volume to something more project-specific like sample 
uh, sync. And this does appear multiple times in that file. So use a global find and replace. And over in the docker sync.yaml file, we just need to make that same change once. Another quick step to finish off the customization process, we're going to add db dump files to the list of files that are excluded from the sync. Considering how big db dumps can get into the gigabytes, um, you would just be waiting a long time for that file to, to copy into the Docker environment. And there's, there's no reason for the dump file itself to be there. Now that we're finished editing configuration files, we'll execute a quick command that transforms the format of the config.php file. This is done using the ECE tools docker config convert command. This transforms the values we just customized in the config.php file to Unix environment variables, which are utilized by the cloud environment. Now that we've prepared and customized our Docker configuration files, we'll get the environment running with two simple commands. The first is docker sync, which will perform the initial sync of project files from the host machine to the Docker environment. Docker sync uh, actually copies the files into the environment and then actively syncs them as you're working on the project. So when you're changing code in your favorite code editor, this is happening on the host machine, and then those changes are synced into the environment. Um, this is done for performance reasons, especially on Mac. Docker does not have good performance when running Magento 2. Uh, so we'll run, run this startup command, and depending on the size of your project, it, it will take a while to run the first time, but it's just this first time uh, subsequent starts of the sync will happen more quickly. Now that the sync is finished successfully, we'll use the docker compose up command with an argument of, of D. Um, this will perform the initial download of the images you're using as part of the environment, which you're not seeing here because I had already downloaded them. Um, I'm simply seeing a verification that those uh, containers have started up. Next, we'll take a look at the containers that are a part of the environment. The Docker PS command will list them all along with essential information about where and how they're running. Uh, perhaps the most important are, are the port numbers that you'll use to access the, the specific services from your host machine. For instance, if I wanted to use a, uh, a database browser on my host machine, then I would use the port that's listed over here in the ports column. At this point, the only file left to generate is the env.php file, which, su which supplies Magento with the connection information for the various services in our Docker environment. Um, if you know how to build one of these manually, or if you're the technical lead on a project has supplied you with a pre-generated one, uh, th at that point you're pretty much done. You, you could start up the environment, but if you're not quite sure how you would generate an env.php file, uh, Magento does give you a pretty easy way to do this. I start by copying the env.php file from a cloud environment. So I'm going to SSH into a cloud environment, output the env.php file to the screen, copy it, and then paste it into a, uh, a file created in my local project. Now we'll issue another ECE tools command, which will start the deployment process here in our local environment. And just like the deployment process of a cloud environment, the env.php file will be regenerated with connection information for the services active in our local environment. We're almost ready to view our project in a browser running locally, uh, but first a couple important steps. If you're using Elasticsearch, which you should be, you'll need to re-index that 
To perform routine maintenance on your local environment, you'll want to do that from inside the containers. Um, so the Docker command that gets you inside a container is docker compose run deploy bash. Then from inside the container, you can just issue Magento commands as usual. And the final step is to add the local URL to the host's file. I won't demonstrate that. You can easily find other documentation on that if you're unfamiliar. We can now load our locally running project in a browser. Here you can see the cloud environment. You can tell by the enormous dom domain name. But uh, putting in our own local URL, you can see that we have a near exact duplicate of the cloud environment on our local. And we're ready to start development on any tickets or issues. Now that your Docker environment is set up, you'll want to continue using it for the days, weeks, or months to come while you build or maintain your website. The good news is you none of the steps outlined so far in the video will need to be repeated. You basically just need to start and stop your environment using the docker compose up, start, and stop commands. But beware using docker compose down because this will dissociate your data volumes from the environment. You'll, the effect will be you'll lose, most importantly, the database of your project. The data hasn't been deleted, but if you're new to docker, you may have trouble finding where it went. Aside from starting and stopping the environment, the only other docker command that needs to be run regularly is docker compose run deploy bash. This allows you to enter the docker environment and run bin magento commands such as clearing the cache and re-indexing. Earlier in the video we did use this command to re-index the project. Thanks a lot for watching the video. I hope it's been beneficial to you and if you have any questions you can contact me on the Magento Community Engineering Slack channel.